you might be doing a CEO's job most of the time, but actually when you have the title, you feel it in such a different way. And I remember at the time sort of thinking, yeah, right. Um, but it's really, really true because you then go to sleep with it. You question everything. You think it's all on you. And it's tough. We work with sensitive creatures. We're working with people that have a lot of creative talent that need handholding and nurturing or sometimes pushing. Hello, my fellow leaders. Greetings from sunny Brazil. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. This summer, I'm doing a little experiment with short clips from past conversation that really resonated with me. This week, I revisit my conversation with a luxury brand builder and former CEO of Stella McCartney, Dundas and Christopher Kane, Sarah Crook. In this short clip, Sarah talks about becoming a CEO to a creative founder for the very first time. They need to achieve and failure particularly the fear of failure. Sarah tells me about the challenges that she has faced as a CEO building a dream team and the three words she would use to describe true leadership. If you are interested in finding out what it takes to build a successful team or you're a leader in the creative industry and want some tips, then this episode is for you. Please make sure to follow or subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. I kick off by asking Sarah about her biggest failure. Talking about making mistakes and mm-hmm. failures, mm. what would you say is the biggest failure that you've had? Oh, the biggest failure that I've had. Um, I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite hard on myself as a person generally. I think I grew up as my biggest fear was failure, like from the age of six. So, you know, it's kind of, I've probably got a shopping list. It's really hard to like <laughs> pin one down. Um, but, you know, I grew up kind of always feeling like I needed to achieve. Um, so, I mean, listen, when you don't do your numbers as CEO, it's horrible. You know, when you go into a group level, when you have support and I've had brilliant meetings with that and I've had less brilliant meetings and, there are never any excuses. You never want to be that person that was like, you know, obviously the last two years, everyone's like Corona. Um, but you never want to sit there and go, it's X, Y, and Z, because I think what you realize when you become a CEO, and I remember I got a very good bit of advice actually from, um, from Frederick when we worked together at Stella and he was like, you will know the difference is you might be doing a CEO's job most of the time, But actually, when you have the title, you feel it in such a different way. And I remember at the time sort of thinking, yeah, right. Um, But it's really, really true because you then go to sleep with it. You question everything. You think it's all on you. And it's tough. We work with sensitive creatures. Creatives are that. Um, And we're working in that industry and we're, we're a business. But we're working with people that have a lot of creative talent that need handholding and nurturing or sometimes pushing you know there has to be days where you kind of go that's not okay and this is what we need to do you know mm. that there, there are those moments um I mean numbers is always hard for me because I like success and I like feeling like I've delivered what I've promised I think people's the other I definitely can look back with one or two people where I th- wish I'd spent more time with you and therefore hadn't lost you to another business Um, And I think that's really hard because when you've got a good structure and good senior people and you can actually do your job versus when you're in a much smaller organization, so take Dundas, you know, you're doing five people's jobs, you're not really doing your CEO role Mm -hmm. and you're missing a lot and you're not doing the mentoring and you're not nurturing, you can't hire the talents, maybe you haven't got the budgets um, and you don't have the time to really give to that. And I think for me that that triggers failure a lot to me because I don't like to see people unhappy in their work and I don't like to see people feel like, you know, they have to go somewhere else to be fulfilled. Mm. Um, so I, th- I think it's it's not like one big thing. It's kind of, you'll come home your day where you're kind of like, oh, I don't feel good about that. And mm. I think there's, as I said, real tangibles in numbers, but there's the less tangibles in people would be the other. Or it might even just be you walk out of a meeting, you go, I didn't handle that as well as I should have done. You know, because, and again, you, you have to be that level-headed, even even keel. And I think one of the important things of being in any leadership role is being able to have one or two right-hand people that you can go and just kind of dump on and, you know, mm. save space. Because I think everyone needs that. Mm. How um, do you build a good team? 
Um, I think the first thing is really the org structure gets really neglected. I mean, even when I was consulting, I spent a lot of time with brands, big and small. So I, you know, I consulted for quite a long time for Lueve and with Pucci. And one of the interesting things is you go into a business and they're like, well, this isn't working. This is not working. The first thing I say is, okay, let's see your org structure. I mean, one, have they got one? Most of them have the big <laughs> brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You laugh, but you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it and you're like, okay, like what is the function that you need to make this happen and you go back I mean one of, one of the best you know good HR person will as you all know will sit there and go take all the names out of the boxes put the roles and the functions in order to, to execute what you need to do to build the business um, so remove the emotion at least at the start but I think the organisational structure is, is totally key because quite often you've just got wrong people doing the wrong jobs pe reporting to the wrong people duplication therefore if you've got duplication you've got ambiguity if you've got ambiguity you've got lack of accountability if you've got lack of accountability you've got blame and you start building this culture of blame which you know we've all worked in companies where there's a blame culture and that's totally that's negative energy from the beginning so I think you know it, as soon as I start in an organization that's what I look at first and that's where you have to make some tough decisions you go look that actually doesn't make sense it might have made sense for the last five years but to set in place what we want to achieve for the next three to five we need to adjust mm. the organizational mm. structure. Is the What's the hardest point. thing about building a team? For me is I'm very oversensitive to like other people. So, you know, I'll look at people and be like, okay, maybe they're not the right person for that role, but they've got a skill set. Hey, how do I move them? I'm not as cutthroat as probably other CEOs might be. Sometimes you have to be. Um, but I think Again, it's communicating the strategy. I think if everyone's clear and they're passionate about the vision and they believe in the vision, that's the other thing. It's very easy to write a business plan and a strategy and a vision and present it, you know, <laughs> on, a, on an away day. And I've done a few of those, but you have to get people going. I believe we can be that. And I believe we can do those numbers. And occasionally I'll put numbers down and I can tell they're just like how how on earth are we going to achieve that? You know, and that will partly be coming from group, but that's also my job. I'm the buffer. Now I have mm -hmm. to be like, look, what's realistic, but still ambitious versus what do I want to go and communicate to my team? So I think making them part of the vision and getting them excited about it, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if they're not passionate and they don't believe and they don't feel they can contribute, then you're not going to get the best out of people. Mm -hmm. And I think, historically if I look back I was good at presenting a vision and a strategy and doing those things and accountability but you've got to keep checking in with that with the process and you know you can say it's a management a weekly management meeting but it's more than that it's quarterly or kind of bi-monthly where you sit down and go look where are you on your plan where you know how are you feeling about this are you going to achieve what you need as part of the jigsaw puzzle so it's that constant checking in rather than here it is and we're all heads down doing it mm. um and I think people can spend a lot of time being busy but you have to keep checking in and making sure you're on track and if you're not you might have to change track because maybe your strategy wasn't right in the first place mm. so. if you could summarize leadership what it means to you mm -hmm. in three words what would you say um, visionary, strategic, because I think often it's lacking, because I think if people don't believe a leader has a vision and a strategy, then they're not going to believe in you or, or the, or the function, um, and mentoring. I think it's really, really important. And I think it's becoming more important in that space. So mm. those would be my three. That was Sarah Crook, former CEO of Stella McCartney, Dundas and Christopher Kane. I'm your host, Maria Vorostovsky, and I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe or follow button and I'll see you next week.